The autonomous AI agent space is heating up. Stanford University drops this gem. Octopus B2, on-device language model for super agent. A small model that surpasses the performance of GPT-4 in both accuracy and latency. How fast it is. And what it is, it's an on-device language model for super agent. So on-device meaning it can run on your computer, on your phone, on whatever. And we've seen something very similar from Apple recently. They have an on-device model. They are calling it Realm. And it basically is kind of like a vision model that is tiny compared to GPT-4, for example. Something like a thousandth of a percent the size of GPT-4 can run on device and for certain visual tasks for understanding what's written on your computer screen, on your phone screen, it exceeds GPT-4's capabilities. And this is kind of in the same vein. So this is Octopus 2. They're saying that language models, these LLMs, they're potentially effective in automatic workflows. They possess the crucial ability to call functions. Now, really fast, let's talk about what, what calling functions means just so everybody's on the same page. Most people probably have heard me talk about it, but just really fast. So for example, if you're dealing with an Android phone, and the same thing can be said for Apple phones or your computer or your thermostat or your car or pretty much anything nowadays, it has certain functions that you can call that define what it can do. So for example, one of them, if we're talking about the Android phone, for example, or in any Android system, it can take a photo and you can specify which camera to use, like the back camera and what resolution to take the photo at, right? And here are the parameters you can use. You can say the camera is in the front or the back, right? De depending on what phone you're using, resolution, etc. Another function is get trending news, right? In the US region, in English, give me five results that are the top results or get the weather forecast or send an email or search YouTube videos, et cetera, et cetera. All right, but that's function calling, right? That's that's what functions are, an example of, of a few functions. And they're essential in creating AI agents. And they're saying despite the high performance of large scale language models in cloud environments, they are often associated with concerns over privacy and cost. So certainly I saw a number of applications with Claude or GPT-4 that were kind of cool, but boy, they cost a lot because you're paying you know, open AI or Anthropic to run their model in the cloud. It's not on your device, right? It's not local. So everything's going through their services. You're paying some per token or per million token fee that you're paying them. So the more complicated this gets, the more you pay. And also, of course, privacy, right? They can see exactly what you're doing. So the solution to that would be something that just runs on your device, right? But our current on-device models for function calling, they have issues with latency, right? How fast they're able to run and accuracy, how good they are at actually calling the right function. And they're saying our research presents a new method that empowers an on-device model with 2 billion parameters, which is rather small. It's not as tiny as some of the smaller Rome models, the Apple Vision models, but it's definitely on the really smaller side. But these on-device models, they surpass the performance of GPT-4 in both accuracy and latency, and they decrease the context length by 95%. Then they dunk on Zuckerberg for a bit, and they're saying this thing is fast enough to deploy across a variety of edge devices. So think, you know, in your phone, in your car, in your fridge, in your thermostat. Some examples are creating calendar reminders, getting the weather and text messaging, you know, either the user or somebody else about the weather and searching YouTube for a Taylor Swift concert. And of course, those things are completed and the agent successfully does the thing it is asked. And so they're saying that the AI agent's growing presence is very rapid. The advancement in agents is rapid, right? So you have AI assistant tools like Multion. So we've covered that here. I was really surprised about how good it was. Like that's where I was like, well, we're we're certainly farther ahead than I than I realized. Adept AI, so I've heard quite a bit about them. And then there's of course Rabbit R1, the humane AI pin. And there's a number of other ones, including open sourced ones. And they're talking various things, various research that went into that, like prompting techniques, chain of thought, reasoning, and the rise of multi-agent systems. But this is a kind of a new trend in this industry, showcasing the use of language models, right? So these GPTs and Claude's and whatnot, and Gemini's to develop a dependable software that empowers users. We use API calling, you know, function calling and reasoning abilities. And while this works well, they want to create something that is on device, something that can be run privately and not cost too much. 
and they want to be able to deploy these agents and these models on edge devices like smartphones, cars, VR headsets, and personal computers. I'll link the paper if you want to go through the methodology. There's quite a bit here. We will just highlight the most important parts. It looks like they've used Google's Gemma 2 billion model. So this is the small model that Google has made open source. And after training this model, they will be comparing it to kind of the state-of-the-art models. Specifically here, they're going to test it against GPT-4, the uh, January 25th checkpoint or sort of that update, right? Because they have multiple GPT-4 models. So this is the Chatbot Arena leaderboard. So you can see here, this is the 0125, January 25th, January 25th which is... Uh, you know, one of the better ones, it looks like the 1106, November 06 is more highly rated. But I mean, they're also close. It's pretty much the same. That could be just a small variation there and not significant. And they also test against GPT 3.5. And also they're going to test the RAG technique. So this ability to, for it to sort of check against a database or, you know, you can think of it like if you have a, like a cheat sheet during, to which you can look to see which potential functions are available, which is going to reduce hallucinations. So they talk about Llama 7 billion with RAG with that sort of retrieval augmented generation. So it seems like it didn't do too well. So the performance was modest, even though they gave it, you know, few shot learning. So they gave it examples of how to do it. It was slow and had a 68% accuracy. So, so Llama kind of gets a thumbs down. GPT 3.5 with, you know, retrieval with its little cheat sheet where it can look up answers. That one did pretty well. It has an impressive accuracy of 98.095 and the latency was significantly improved, only 1.97 seconds. So here's kind of the chart uh, that you can see comparing all of them. This is Llama. Boy, it did not do well. But the thing to notice here is that obviously all of these other ones, well, I mean, they're all pretty close and they're all pretty close to 100%, right? None of them are at 100%, but they're 98, 97, 98, 99, 99, 99, and then 98. With the 99s, with the three 99s being Octopus 0, Octopus 1, and Octopus 2, they beat all of the other ones, including GPT-4, which got a 98.571. So the different Octopus models, Octopi models, I'm just going to say Octopus. So here's how they sort of trained all the various Octopus models. So Octopus, I guess, is zero. This would be zero. So they used, so they either used full model training or they used LoRa, which is a low rank adaptation. So we, we did a video uh, a long time ago about it. Basically, it's a way to kind of fine tune and simplify models to use less parameters while keeping similar results. So I guess you can like think of it kind of like a, you know how sometimes you can make image files smaller without necessarily losing detail? Kind of think of it like that, I guess. And then they trained uh, some of them on 1,000 data points. So sort of their data size was, their data set size was 1,000. And they've also tried 500 for Octopus 3 and then 100 for Octopus 4. So it looks like that's why there was an actually a drop off for Octopus 3, perhaps, maybe because of the smaller data set. And then when they were testing GPT-4, interestingly, so of course it exhibited superior accuracy at 98.5 and even lower latency than GPT 3.5, even though it was a bigger model. And they're saying GPT-4's enhanced performance suggests OpenAI could be allocating more GPU resources to it or that experiences less demand compared to GPT 3.5. That's interesting. And this is sort of like the latency or, you know, how long it takes for it to run. So obviously the higher, the worse it is, the lower, the better. So this is in seconds. So as you can see, again, Llama, oh my God, 13 plus seconds, right? Then you have GPT-4 at just over one second, but the octopus models, they're at like a third of a second for most of them. So 0 0.38, 0 0.37, 0 0.36. So lower the low rank uh, adaptation. So switching to lower training results in a minor accuracy decrease, but it's still high enough that it's sufficiently robust for product deployment. But the point of all of this is, is what does this all mean? What is, what is the importance of all of this? And that is simply that and we, we've seen the same thing with Apple's research, and now this is Stanford. It looks like these on-device AI agents, the architecture behind them, doesn't have to be these massive models like GPT-4 with their 1.7 trillion parameters or whatever that exact number is. They can be tiny and they can be very fast and they can be very inexpensive while still maintaining a lot of their accuracy. It's interesting to think about because right now, 
a lot of companies are betting that all the kind of forward progress will come from building up more chips, right? Bigger power plants, more parameters, just more, more, more bigger. Meanwhile, these two papers from Apple and Stanford are showing that tiny models, tiny agents can be extremely effective at certain specific tasks. You want an agent that does function calling. Well, here's a tiny one that does better than GPT-4. You want something that can read your screen, understand like all the words on your screen so it knows what to click on. Well, here's a microscopic one, right, from Apple. If I recall correctly, it was like 250 million parameters was the smallest one. And then it goes up to 3 billion for the biggest one. Right, compare that to 1.7 trillion GPT-4, right? These outperform the massive one. It's interesting because we can make the AI better by making it bigger. We can make it better by making it smaller. There doesn't seem to be a, a limit to where it can go.